Hey guys, let's go ahead and go over this quiz that you guys just took on Friday, August uh, 28th, 2020. Question number one says describe the data. They have all these numbers here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to arrange the numbers in order. So I'm going to look for the smallest number and I have 33, 35, 37, 41, anything in the 40s, uh, 50s, 60s, 62, 65, and 268s. And just to triple check, I'm going to actually uh, see how many numbers we have. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we say n equals 9. There's 9 numbers in the list. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Perfect. Uh, so the first question is, what is the mean? The mean is taking, the symbol is called x bar. And the reason I'm using that symbol is actually you'll see that on your calculator. It's the summation of the numbers. So you're adding up all of these numbers and dividing it by how many numbers are on the list. Let me show you guys again how to use that. I'm using this uh, just calculator on my iPad. If I can find it. Where did I put it? Here it is. And this one actually minimizes a graphing calculator. Okay, so... You turn on your calculator and it looks like this. And I'm going to press stat right next to the left key. And then I'm going to go edit. And I have these numbers in the list. So you're going to go back um, up arrow all the way to the very top where it says L1. And then I'm going to press clear which is right next to the down key. And press enter. So it's cleared out all those numbers. And then I'm going to go ahead and input um, all of those numbers. Those numbers are uh, I don't have them in order. Sixty five, sixty eight, thirty five, fifty, sixty eight, thirty three, forty one, sixty two. 37. Okay, so I have all the numbers in the list. You'll notice that it has uh, all those numbers are to the right there it says uh, 9 and then for list 1 and then the 10th number there's nothing there because we only have 9 numbers. So let's try something. Press stat and then you can even which says edit here. I'm going to press number 2. I want to sort A to D. Uh, sort A, which means basically a sort it ascending, meaning going up. And then I put in list 1. So to get that list, it's where the stat button is on the left arrow there, but it's in blue. So I'm going to have to press second, list, and then press L1. And let's press enter. Okay, so what's done, if you go back to stat, and then edit, number 1, it's actually put all your numbers in order, which matches what we did by hand. Okay. And then now to calculate something called five number summary, which you guys are going similarly, but it will just run these numbers really quickly. So you're going to press stat, stat, and then you're going to click on the second one, which says calc, calculate, and then we're looking for one variable statistics, one var stats, okay? Calc, um, I got all those numbers into the list, one var stats, L1. So it's even telling me the calculator command. Let's just see if we just do stat, uh, sorry, second list L1. Okay, there we go. That's what we wanted. Now in here, you have a bunch of things. Again, the summation, the backwards E there, summation of X is 459. And the, um, let me, let me, Take a picture of this. You can use it later. 
Right, let's go back. All right, so we're back. So again, it already told us that the answer for x bar was 51. So the mean is 51. That is our answer. And remember, the formula there is the summation which of all those numbers was 459. So if I add up all these numbers in orange here, I'll get 459. And then the n number, which was right here, 9, if I divide that, you will get 51. Okay, so we've done this one. The median, let's pick a different color, the median is the middle. Well, remember, 9 is an odd number, okay? So, um, there are 9 numbers here. And you'll notice there are 4 numbers to the right and 4 numbers to the left. So, my median is 50. My median is 50. Okay, what is the mode? Mode is what happens the most. So do you see any repeating numbers? I see uh, 68. So 68 is my mode. And then the last one is the how about a light purple? The last one is the range, which is the maximum minus the minimum. That's what the range is. So it, since I put them in ascending, um, if you guys see what I'm trying to show you, the ascending means the numbers go from smallest to biggest. Okay, so my max is 68. And my minimum, or my smallest number, is over here on the left. So 68 minus 33, that's going to give me um, 35. So my range is equal to 35, which would be this choice right there. Let's try question number next one. <coughs> they have a graph here. And I think I tried this last time and it didn't work. It has to be, I think, my own numbers. Yep. Let me let me write these out really quickly. I'm just going to duplicate this uh, stem and leaf plot. And I actually need to double check because if this question was on your one point four notes, just like I made a mistake on the first question. I took it out eventually second period. I won't count against you. Alright, so if I take this and can I turn it sideways? I can move it. Oh, can't turn it sideways. That's what I was trying to do. <coughs> if you turn your head sideways, 90 degrees to the right, so that 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 are at the bottom. So up here's the bottom, and up here's the top. You'll notice that in our data, you can draw kind of bumps at this. There goes the tail, right? And where the tail is, where it's, where it's skewed. So... This is the left and this is the right. I'm turning my head sideways, so there's the top and this is the bottom. So that is called skewed right, would be our answer. Um, again, you could draw a kind of bumps over yours. And if you can fold that, if this left side matches exactly the right side, we call that one symmetric. So symmetric is your answer for that one. Um, another vocab for this one is, um, you can kind of say it is uniform. Other vocab words, or almost normal, approximately normal. 
All right, let's take a look at this one here. Again, draw your... Where's all the data going towards? Where's the tail? Where's the tail? So this is the tail, and this is the left, this is the right, so it's going to the right, skewed right. We're going skiing. Do you guys remember that? You're going skiing towards the right, so that would be this one right here. Question number three. The FAA, Federal Aviation Agency, just controls all the airplanes, monitors airlines for safety and customer service. For each flight, the carrier must report the type of aircraft, flight number, number of passengers, and whether or not the flights departed and arrived on schedule. Classify these parameters as quantitative or categorical. Parameters is just another word for a sample. So if we went to LAX and they took a look at these airplanes that are landing. Okay. All right, so let's re abbreviate. Categorical is 95% uh, words is your answer. N nine, most of the time. There's sometimes also, though, they are numbers, but you don't take the average. Don't or can't take average. It doesn't make sense in the real world. And then quantitative is numbers that you can take the average or mean. Okay, let's go over this. So types of aircraft, I don't know, big and small. Those are words, so the answer is going to be categorical. Okay, flight number. Okay, let's use, let's pretend the flight numbers are like the room. Okay, so let's just say I'm in room 902 and Mr. Davis is in room 901 and Mrs. Hernandez is in room 900. If I take the average of those numbers, I add them all up, and then that's the summation, and then I divide it by three, you're going to get a mean of 901. That doesn't make sense to actually average our room numbers. Um, so in this case, for flight numbers, it would not make sense to actually take the average of this. So it would not be quantitative, even though the room numbers or flight numbers are some kind of numbers, but they're associated with the category, like the room 902 is associated with Mr. Ng. 902 has no significance like my height or my weight, Hopefully not my weight. So the answer is categorical for flight numbers. Again, review. The reason why um, it is not quantitative, even though a flight number might be like 902 or 901, it doesn't make sense to take the average. And then I'll just highlight this part over here. Remember, um, you don't really want to take the average of our room numbers. You could take the average of, you know, it would make more sense if you did the average number of, like, number of kids we have or our height. And say the average height of those three classrooms, that would make sense. Question number three, the number of passengers. I see number of passengers, maybe one, one flight has 1,000, one has 200, so it would make sense to do quantitative. You can take the average. Arrived or departed... Um, on schedule. So arrived means um, you came and departed means they're leaving. So those are only two responses. These are the answers. It's either a plane came on time or when it came and then when it left. So the words are just arrived or departed. And so those are words. So those will be categorical. And then number of complaints. Maybe um, the person serving you the drink spills on your on your on your shirt and you're not too happy, so they count the number of complaints, that would be quantitative. And then the last question. The number of eagles, birds, observed along a certain river per day over a two week period. So every day they're counting how many birds they see and then the data they get you know, let's say Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and this is week number one, and this is week number two. And then they're basically filling out this chart, how many eagles they see on that day, okay? But if I listed out all those numbers, right, which they have down here, 
they're organizing it into something called uh, a frequency table. So to review the frequency table, then it says what is what is um, the frequency table that represents it. Remember, frequency here just means count. Count a frequency, a relative frequency would have been um, putting it into a fraction and a decimal. Okay. So they're saying that on Monday, they saw one bird. And I noticed I have zero to four here. So I'm going to do, I'm just going to make my own table. And the number of eagles, 10 to 14, 15 to 19. And I can just use a tally. I can just use a tally. Watch. So one goes in between zero to four. Three, two, five. One, two, three. One, two, three. Ten, eight, nine. Ten, eight, and nine. Fifteen, zero. Seven, twelve, thirteen, six, and eighteen. Okay, then I just have to match up these numbers. So I have five, four, three, and two. So that one, nope. Uh, nope. Nope. Um, did we make a mistake? Five, four, I, I think I made a mistake. Let's see what my mistake is. Um, 10, 10, 10, 12, 13. Or I made a mistake on, um, I think that one's right, because then there's only... 15 and 18, so these look correct. It's a good idea, just like me, go back over those numbers. Zero to four. One, two, up oh, there it is. Three, four. And then five, I think I counted five. One, two, three, four, five. So that should have been five. So here. This is the correct answer. Correct answer is B. Um, definitely double check. And if you catch yourself in a mistake like I did, you can actually go back and just double check. Good luck, guys. Yeah.